Welcome to Reclaimed Heritage, a place where we discuss traditional skills for the practical home. We're your hosts, Christy, Carrie, and Elaine. In the last 40 years or so, extensive research has been conducted examining the health benefits of consuming friendly bacteria. There appear to be links between consuming these friendly bacteria and improved digestion and detoxification, among other things. Our modern food culture reflects these findings in the popularization of probiotic products. A probiotic is simply a food that contains these friendly bacteria. Walk down the aisles of any supermarket and you'll see products labeled with this word. Everything from yogurts to dietary supplements to beverages. Fermented foods, as Pasteur determined, are naturally high in these friendly bacteria. Just like fashion, food tends to go in trends. We've recently seen a revitalization of the 1910s fermented food craze. Excerpt from Living History Farms. Welcome back. This is Season 2, Episode 8, and we are talking about fermentation, pickling, all that kind of fun stuff. Awesome. Yeah, so, so how was your week? Crazy. Crazy. <laughs> I feel like mm-hmm. if I'm it was being crazy honest. for everybody. Why was yeah. yours crazy? Well, I know why yours was crazy. Garden's full on. Mm-hmm. We're having to water stuff, which is not fun. We finally got some rain, but I think it's still another week before we mm-hmm. get any more rain. Um, had my granddaughter's one year party in the last little bit, which surprise i overbought for <laughs> no there was like the like her daughter her granddaughter turned one in what may the very end of may the yeah. very end of may was the party yeah but you know like in march she's like here's her first birthday gift it's early and then in <laughs> april I, here's her first it's it's early she, i'm not gonna get her one for the party and then like uh-uh. the first week of may here's her early I, but i'm really not bringing anything and then i walk into her bedroom like the week before she's like look at <laughs> like Riley for her birthday, and I'm like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. To be, I mean, to be completely truthful, I come from a long line of people who cannot wait to give yeah. the gifts. Like my mom's horrible, mm-hmm. so I really just, I am like my children <laughs> when confronted with like what yeah. you're doing, and you're like, first thing out of your mouth is somebody else's name. I'm like, well, my mom. Yeah. Does the same thing. <laughs> yeah. The problem with being like that is your children pick up on it because mm-hmm. we do the same thing. So they know if they say, can I get this? It can be my cr- Christmas present. Mm-hmm. You don't oh, have yeah. to get me anything. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They know 100%. it's not going to happen. Like, right. we're still going to get them stuff yes. for Christmas. Yeah. My mm. mom does the same. Thing. Does she? Yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> Because the day comes and you just feel it's, like you the day can't pass uh, without there being something also gifted. Yes. No. I think Christmas is worse for me than birthdays. Yes. Christmas, like, because it's the day mm-hmm. and, like, everybody's doing mm-hmm. it, the, you know, opening up the presents that day. I, the There's early pressure. Christmas doesn't work. Yeah. Birthdays yeah. I tend to do better yeah. on because I'm like, eh, we already did that. Let's move mm-hmm. on. But. It is Jesus' birthday. So how can you not? <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> Yeah. Again, yeah. if you're gonna use somebody yeah. else's name first thing out of your mouth, that's not the bad way to go. They're oh like, goodness. go big or go home. It's <laughs> true. How about you? Mm, this is like one of our craziest weeks, probably of the year. It's our which, which actually overlapped with the two of you ladies mm-hmm. in totally different ways. So with mm-hmm. Christy, we had home on the rock graduation, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, which you had a son graduate, yes. and that was super exciting. And yes. I helped run like some of that sing. program so what is that queen another one bites a dozen uh-huh. yes <laughs> yes <laughs> that was awesome right it's your fifth fourth 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 graduate first son mm-hmm. so it's mm-hmm. very low-key yeah very different yeah mm-hmm. interesting you didn't have to go dress shopping i didn't yeah he was like mom nice jeans and a nice shirt <laughs> i'm like sure everything yes. the, the uniform yes, yes. <laughs> yeah Right. And then we got there and I was like, oh, honey, maybe we should have got you some dress pants. And he's like, no, these are dark enough. Mom, no one can even right. tell. Yeah. yeah. No. Yeah. Patchy in his jeans is perfect. So <laughs> his cowboy boots, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah. <laughs> the uniform. Yeah. So that overlapped with you this week. And then with Elaine, mm-hmm. we had a lot of 4-H stuff due this week. So it's like the second craziest week of 4-H that's mm-hmm. not fair week. But it sure rivals. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, and of course, all of the things happened and were due within like the same three day time period. And so the mm-hmm. fact that you're here and drool isn't dribbling oh. out of your mouth and you're not like brain dead is pretty great. I took lots of things today to help me be functional. Was it fermented vegetables? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> to 
they make pickles with caffeine? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> but seriously, like we went a whole week. It's the like it's weird. Fair week is different, but this is the week where like we're making poster mm-hmm, boards, and mm-hmm. I'm gone a lot because of graduation and so hands on work. Yeah, it is just the week of like. Mm, I don't know. I wouldn't even say maintenance cleaning. It's not even that. It's there's just no cleaning. It's just a week that we get through it, and then Monday came and have to pay the piper. So that's today. Mm, fun. Mm-hmm. All the yeah. laundry, all the cleaning, all that. Yeah. 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 How about you? Well, I um, retracted my. We're schooling through the whole summer <laughs> this past week. Um, I had informed my children. I probably informed you. Mm-hmm. Like we are schooling through the summer, but just mm-hmm. like math. Mm-hmm. spelling actually if i say it all you're gonna say that's everything yeah. but uh, and then it, it occurred to me between 4-h mm-hmm. and we're doing the national bible b mm-hmm. for the very first time this summer and the summer reading program and swimming in the pool and cleaning the, i was like yeah. hey, there's just no time so i sh- mm-hmm. shifted gears and that is our school which is one yeah. of the luxuries of homeschooling is right. mm-hmm. the, the bible just fantastic like mm-hmm. how yeah. wonderful is that in 4-h and, 4-H. and and yeah. we have a garden going as well. Yeah. So you mm-hmm. have all those yeah. things. So um, they're thrilled yeah. that they get to do something a little bit different. And we yeah. just started that this morning. With, they got their you know, summer gift early. They did. They <laughs> did. And they're already in the pool. And yeah. ride, they were riding go-karts yeah. around, I don't know, 7.30 this morning. Wow. So we're in full summer gear. My neighbors are going to love us. I was going to say your neighbors <laughs> love, love you. you. And they were riding a go-kart <laughs> last night with your boys around oh, okay. 10.30. Okay. And yeah. I'm like, guys. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> maybe yeah. not. Maybe not. We do no. live in a neighborhood. So. <laughs> My goal is to do schools on the day days that are not as busy. Mm-hmm. That hasn't been in the last three weeks. So, <laughs> so far, yeah, yeah. so far, the kids they, are winning. They're on spring break or we, summer break. We are but. taking a break through after you know until after our fair, and mm, then we're back. Right. On well, I told them August. So, we'll that's start. What, we'll yeah. take well, a your good fair's eight July. weeks yeah. off. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's which puts us after mm-hmm. our four H fair, and yeah. yeah, and then we move into August with a wedding. So I say, yeah, we're doing school. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The wedding school planning is yeah is taking time and. Which is good. It's all good it stuff. Is it's good. just all. It is good. It's you know what? It's, it's a, a full, abundant life. Mm-hmm. It is. So. It's just I need to learn to stop saying like when things oh, slow down no, 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 because no. it does not it. happen. I and then I'm it. kind of have a little bit of an attitude mm-hmm. inside mm-hmm. my brain with myself and mm-hmm. like I can't get to this stuff. So I think the last two years of our lives collectively uh, purged that saying from my. Oh, goodness. Well, from I've said it my whole life. My kids like laugh at me. I mean, I've I've heard Haley like you know quote me to other people like oh, she always says after this week you know. <laughs> <laughs> but then like with starting the church and like right. the ordination and the deacons and the multiple weddings mm-hmm. and then like the grandkid component, mm-hmm. it's not. It's just not. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> so which is good. It right? is good. Like, it's, they're all it is, really good things and right. yes. so thankful to be part of it. But absolutely, yeah. we just have to. Learn to run deep breathe and pace and and yourself. And, yeah. And yeah. know when you not to take mm-hmm. on too much. But speaking of taking on too much, mm-hmm. I'm hoping this is not too much, but we're talking about fermenting. Yes. Mm-hmm. So uh, what is your favorite family fermented food? Hands you, down, it's our favorite have. food, food, period. Favorite Us fermented too. food uh-huh. would be pickles. So yeah. it's our, yeah. I have kids who mm-hmm. drink the pickle mm-hmm. juice. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, same. And like, we'll fight over the pickle juice mm-hmm. if I'm being mm-hmm. honest. So yeah, yeah, I would say. I mean, pickles. That's that's the easiest one. I think it's the thing that everybody in our house likes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I wish they weren't so picky about their pickle choice, but they're pickle snobs. Mine like dilly beans. So I mm. once I'm done, sick of snapping beans and canning mm-hmm. them just as green beans. I will pickle them and make and they're crunchy mm-hmm. they stay crunchy a lot longer than cucumbers so yeah. that's a favorite of, at our house yeah what about you guys uh, same pickles mm-hmm. and we love sauerkraut mm-hmm. so that's an easy one we've yeah. always loved sauerkraut yeah. um something i we absolutely love that's a fermented food that i have never made and i probably should is miso soup mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. i know someone brought that to they our did. feast yesterday yeah. and the montgomery i had children yeah. that were excited <laughs> they just love me i love miso soup and yeah. i just haven't gotten around to that so yeah yeah you ladies like some of the crazy ones like kimchi and we love kombucha, kombucha. Mm-hmm. yeah 
I consider sauerkraut crazy, even though it's not. I can't get over the smell. Here's this is I'm gonna be totally honest. The smell of fermented food keeps me from being able to actually try it. So most fermented food I've never even tried. I can't. I just can't get past the smell. But cheese is fermented, and I love cheese. And sourdough something is, else. Sourdough like is put, fermented, and that's delicious. Mm -hmm. But will you do like a layered? hot dog i mean we're gonna talk about the least healthy but like if you do a beef <laughs> beef hot dog do you could you layer it do you ever do coleslaw or anything on it um like some people I do have, honey sauce and yeah, coleslaw I've like done coleslaw yeah because you could try to swap yeah. out kimchi or something i can try we do sauerkraut mm -hmm. on our mm -hmm. yeah. yeah yeah my that's my kids love it my kids we love, love to do sauerkraut yeah. and sauerkraut, and sauerkraut and any pork combination right oh yeah go together really well yeah what's the sandwich that always has the Ruben, Ruben. Ruben. Mm -hmm. my husband's a that's huge fan of those yeah, sandwich, yeah. so mm -hmm. yeah. right so let's talk fermentation what, I know. What, when we say that what are we talking about yeah it's just all the bacteria mm -hmm. so letting food sit mm -hmm. long enough mm -hmm. to grow healthy mm -hmm. bacteria and knowing how to process it then in order to either make it shelf stable or refrigerated right. or whatever uh -huh. in order to consume it later uh -huh. yeah so it makes it last longer mm -hmm. but yeah it gives you lots of the good beneficial bacteria and breaks down all of the uh -huh. sugar so right overwhelmingly right. it is health it's a healthier option uh -huh. for you than than in its original form even now like dairy kefir i liked and that one was crazy easy mm -hmm. easy mm -hmm. to do um i mean i wouldn't say i cheated but i bought like the kefir grains the mm -hmm. starters there so there's dairy kefir and there's mm -hmm. water, water kefir. kefir so you, and the my finding online was that the grains don't overlap they're mm -hmm. they're not the same grain so we just i purchased a right dairy kefir starter it was super easy you just added a certain amount to your milk let it set mm -hmm. it ferments and then from that as long as you keep it's they're all I would say all of your fermenting foods are going to be similar in like the Sourdough. starter component. Mm -hmm. So like you just have to retain mm -hmm. back some of what you fermented that you're mm -hmm. going to use to start your next fermented batch. Yep. So then it was really easy. I just took like two tablespoons out of the kefir that had fermented from the grains, threw it in a quart jar, mm -hmm. filled it with milk, and it just, you know, ferments in your fridge mm -hmm. or on the counter. I ferment Actually. a lot on the counter. Mm -hmm. I do not like fermenting in the crocks like they used to because it's a lot of process that doesn't need to happen it's messy hmm. um so i do a lot of fermenting like our sauerkraut um kimchi so how, like how anything you I, your sauerkraut I, i've seen a lot of the smashing yes the you do the smashing uh -huh. with the wooden implement or like so the hamburger you, you just shred, I the shred the it yep mm -hmm. and then put it in to the jars mm -hmm. and then smash <laughs> until <laughs> you get enough liquid to cover it and then i take um, the little bamboo skewers that you use for um, kebabs on your grill. Okay. And I cut them down so that they fit into a nice axe. And I, I don't use wide mouth jars when I'm doing this because I need that little shoulder on okay. the regular mm -hmm. okay. jar lids. And I um, kind of punch down those bamboo skewers and an axe across it to keep the... Oh, I see what you're saying. Whatever yep. I'm, you know, so, so it's for your sauerkraut kind of to keep glass. the cabbage. That's, that's your weight. Yes, that's my okay. weight. That's your weight. To keep okay. it under the liquid because yep. that's what you want. Otherwise, it'll get moldy. And then I cover the whole, like, I'll do a tray of them and then cover it with cheesecloth to hmm. keep. Okay. And how Because long? we live on a farm and we do right. let housewives in the house and I yep. don't. I want to grow healthy like bacteria, you, not anything else. I like how you said you let them in. <laughs> <laughs> We do let my them in. against my will. So. No, my like, kids stand there when you open the door <laughs> yes. 500 times a day. That's what happens. We let them in. Okay, so, so yeah. do you add anything? Like, is it salt? Is there a brine of any sort? Or you just use the liquid from the cabbage that's smashed? It's a little bit of salt, but not a ton. I'm not a huge... Okay. I like to season my food when I'm eating it. I prefer mm -hmm. not to season it prior to in the in the... Jars. So all the solutions that I found for fermentation online, which I did do some fermenting that did, some turned out, some didn't, but they all have like a very specific mm -hmm. ratio, ratio of like a salt, salt water. It's mm -hmm. very tiny. I mm -hmm. mean, I think it's like... It's small. Yeah. Something like a teaspoon of salt to like a quart of water. Mm -hmm. So it's not like you're creating a salt water So that's water what I'm doing. Brine. I'm doing a quart jar. So I okay. do like a teaspoon. Okay. I eyeball it at this point. Yeah. I just do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and how long yeah. does it sit? 
usually around two weeks. It depends on the temperature where you put it. You, it. What do you want, colder or warmer? Um, right in the middle. You want mm-hmm. like sixty. I'd say you know fifty-seven to sixty-five somewhere in okay. there, mm-hmm. typically. Um, it, it'll ferment faster mm-hmm. if your home is warmer. Mm-hmm. Um, but it does. It's like sourdough, and it takes on. It doesn't sing. But it is like sourdough, and <laughs> that it like takes on that smell, and you can kind of tell when it it's done. Sing, it doesn't yeah. sing. But if you had no air going in, it would explode <laughs> at some point. So look at that con- yeah. It's like a belt. Yeah, right. Yeah. It would belt well, that's the you. thing because of the gases that are released right. in the fermentation mm-hmm. process. You can't seal something mm-hmm. that you're currently fermenting. Mm-hmm. Now, when it's done right. being fermented, mm-hmm. and then I can it. You mm-hmm. can't. Yeah, I but can't. Not sauerkraut. Very. Yeah. Okay. And I've done kimchi before too. So do you? Um, taste, but I prefer the refrigerated kimchi. Do you taste your sauerkraut as it's going to kind of like get where you want? Yeah, I do. That's what I. Yeah. So I haven't done sauerkraut. It seems sauerkraut seems like the less the least intimidating, mm-hmm. honestly, of all the ones to do. Because financially speaking, you're not at a great loss. Mm-mm. I mean, cabbage, it's cabbage. is usually mm-hmm. cheap. It's, you know, mm-hmm. not that big of a deal. But it's one of those things that you can buy in bulk, mm-hmm. like when mm-hmm. it's ready, when when your store, when yeah, it, you know, here in the next little bit, actually. So, yeah. Interesting. Cabbage. But and you haven't made your own kimchi. I have. You have. Uh-huh. Have you, Elaine, made kimchi? I've, no, I do the sauerkraut. I don't okay. do the kimchi. Do you do sauerkraut the same that she does? Mm, not exactly. Um, I do follow a ratio. Mm-hmm. Just I'm not the spice fairy. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> So I have like a four cup liquid to two tablespoons of salt. Mm. Um, one important thing about the salt that I learned way back when was you can't use table salt that's mm, infused with iodine. The iodine yes. will totally mess it up and it will not do it. Yep. So you want to use like pink Himalayan salt, mm-hmm. something like that, like a sea salt. You can even buy salt that's specifically There's for canning salt. Canning yeah. salt. So There's I have canning more makes salt. Can, yeah. Yeah. One of the ones that um, I think it's Weston Price talks about all the time is Redmond's Real Salt is mm-hmm. their favorite. Right. Is that it's your favorite the best, too? Yes. Mm-hmm. Okay. I it's in my Amazon cart, but ladies, I cannot get over the price. This is like why I'm why? still pink Himalayan salting over here. Yeah, <laughs> that's why I do Costco too. But um, yeah, do they sell red? I, that is what I use. Um, no, that's okay, what I yeah. use. The Redmonds is what I use in like my water for yeah, my okay. electrolyte. Like if I'm, yeah. it's mm-hmm. direct mm-hmm. to you know. Mm-hmm. Whereas right. you know the pink Himalayan sea salt yeah. from Costco. They mm-hmm. get the great big container. And yep, that's what we use yeah. for most of our stuff. Same. I use the Celtic sea salt, which mm-hmm. is very expensive per mm-hmm. pound, but that's what goes in my water. Mm-hmm. But yeah, so you're so right. Do, yeah, not that. table salt. Um, I then I've never heard of the skewer. That's like a great idea. Mm-hmm. I always just take my mother-in-law like a leaf from the cabbage and I fold that mm-hmm. and oh, I tuck yeah. that in mm-hmm. and that keeps that keeps it that in. down because mm-hmm. it is hugely important that you want no, none of your vegetables should pop up over that water yeah. line. It could mold it would be bad. You, you, you'd be unedible. You wouldn't be able to eat mm-hmm. that. When you um, have all that time and energy in it, that's yes, the thing that yes. gets me like, yeah, the time, right? Yes. The time. And so you can, if the liquid level is getting low for some reason, you can add some salt water to mm-hmm. it. Okay. Right. Cause you also yeah. want like an inch mm-hmm. because of those gases that can mm-hmm. build up at the top. Um, I don't use a cheesecloth. I actually have one of those mason jar mm-hmm. lids that you can mm-hmm. buy, and it has this little looks like con- a bottle contractor, like a bottle nipple mm-hmm. on the yeah. top with water, mm-hmm. and that the just allows yeah. the um, vapors to go mm-hmm. out. You can also, if you do a tight lid, like once a day, as long as you pop it Isn't open it? once a day, mm-hmm. um, they call it burping Burp it. Yep. the fermentation. So you can do that as well. Um, mm-hmm. We've used a Ziploc bag filled with water. So there's other things you can use, yeah. or they just sell the glass mm-hmm. weights. That are cheap enough. So, I mean, it's similar, just slightly different. Mm -hmm. Um, Same thing with the pickles, the cucumbers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, Same premise. Same. Mm -hmm. I might add some dill to that. Mm -hmm. A little bit of garlic. You don't need to. Um, And then when you're done, do you you can yours. See, Mm -hmm. I don't can process mine, mine in the I, hot water bath can, or not the hot water bath in the I then stick it in the refrigerator. Can, yeah. So when you mm-hmm. you know just like your sourdough starter or all these other things when you mm-hmm. put them in the refrigerator it doesn't actually stop it completely but it it slows it down so oh, yes. much. Okay. So that um I mean, you can have them in the refrigerator for nine months. months. I've done Mm -hmm. up to like nine months. Six months to a year is typically, I think, depending on your recipe and everything. Mm -hmm. But Mm -hmm. I'd say about that time frame. And we'll eat it by then. Like, I 
I want to get better at canning, but I typically use my refrigerator more for mm-hmm. things than mm-hmm. I do canning because I haven't done we got a out huge of practice, amount. Because when we moved to the farm for like two years, we had the refrigerator that Heath's grandmother had, which was mm. what I would say was a small, older mm-hmm. lady's single person fridge. It didn't mm. hold enough. So right. I mm-hmm. would got out of the habit of storing much in right. the fridge. So that I did use my canner more. And, and we're not and making do. copious amounts. Like you, right. you have a much larger garden. You're yeah. getting a lot. I, it, <laughs> the sauerkraut I'm making, I went to the store and purchased the yeah. head of cabbage. So I'm not going to have mm-hmm. 10 jars. Yeah. I make, you know, one or two at a time. Mm-hmm. And, by, and then I get another batch going and we've eaten it by then. So mm-hmm. that works for me. Yeah. So. Oh, well, real quick before mm-hmm. I jump into something yeah. else, you also do, you do, Elaine, water kefir. I, do. I don't know if you've, mm-hmm. if no, you do. No, I've not done water yeah. kefir. You do water kefir. Mm-hmm. And so it's the same premise as the dairy kefir with mm-hmm. the grains and then right. s- saving some back and mm-hmm. adding it. But what is it? Is it just straight up sugar that you're adding? We use that molasses. They use? Okay. Molasses okay. will give it like a malted kind of flavor, which we absolutely love. We, we also do sugar... When we want to make um, a double ferment, because we'll add, when we're done that first ferment, we'll add fruit, like frozen blueberries in it, okay. and ferment it again, which ends up tasting like a, a blueberry pop or something. So tell me what you, so you are have, you like, let's it, say you have me. the grains. It's delicious. Yeah. And you're, you have your grains, mm-hmm. you're adding it to water, mm-hmm. and then you're adding a, With whatever sugar. your portion of sugar or molasses yeah, exactly. is. Exactly. And it also ferments on your counter? Mm-hmm. For about 24 hours, depending okay. on how many grains you have. When we have too many grains, mm-hmm. it's done in 12 hours. So, yeah, I'll eat okay, it. so if you keep it low, it's 24 hours. Then we take out that batch and we put it in something else if we want to add blueberries. Okay. We've done strawberries. Mangoes are mm-hmm. amazing. Or we just put the molasses batch in the refrigerator and we drink it. Do you have whenever. to stick with one type of fruit or can you mix it? Um, no, you can do whatever you, you do, want. Okay. We actually had the because mango blueberries yes, would be awesome, very mm-hmm. good. Well, mm-hmm. you can. We had forever those bottles for carbonated drinks mm-hmm. that yeah. we purchased. Okay, because the longer you let that sit, like it'll be like opening up a champagne bottle. Like mm. it'll pop, mm. and I mean it is. It's delicious. So you can do so many different variations. Like my kids love the fruit ones. Interesting. Yeah. And it's better because A, you have the growth of the bac- the mm-hmm. fermented bacteria, but then B, you've the bacteria has gone through the sugar. Yes. For the most part. Mm-hmm. So you're getting sweet, but it's Without, not like... You're not going to get that glucose response glucose, you would get yeah. from having a sugary drink. So mm-hmm. it's fantastic for the children because right. they're getting... And, right. it's, it, it, and it, it feels is, fun and it's fizzy. fizzy and, yeah. It's carbonated. Mm-hmm. But it's a healthy option. But it's yeah. a healthy option. And I mean, you're... We talk about gut health so much, and this Mm -hmm. is one of those things that fermenting just really adds to your gut. And I was thinking about this on the way here. Like, if you've ever taken a pond sample and then put that under a microscope, like, it Mm -hmm. is amazing all the different microorganisms are in there. And our gut is the same thing. Mm -hmm. So it is hugely important to vary what kind of ferments you're adding. So if you do dairy kefir, that's fantastic. But that's Mm -hmm. only giving you one thing that your gut needs so Mm -hmm. we really work hard to try to mix that up like you know we're doing yogurt today Mm -hmm. but we had sauerkraut at at lunch we had some water kefir Mm -hmm. at some other point just to really feed and get a healthy Mm -hmm. like you'd want a healthy pond that's not full of scum and smells Mm -hmm. your gut's the exact same way and we did talk about yogurt in our dairy episode Mm -hmm. that's an easy yeah Mm -hmm. fermented food and not all i mean so the the sour component that most people think of in fermentation comes from i think the length Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So the longer it is, the more sour yes. it is. Correct. If you're like me and which have is why you taste stuff, when you're you doing taste sauerkraut it because yeah. it doesn't necessarily have yep. to be. You can go for as more sour as like somebody mm-hmm. else's recipe for you to gain the benefits of fermenting. So mm-hmm. we did years, many years ago before we moved to the country, and when we had a wildly successful garden, I bought a contraption called the Perfect Pickler. Did you have this? I feel like no. one of you I talked to. Okay. It's called the Perfect Pickler. It's awesome. Like, if you're getting started, Candace, it feels it overwhelming. Candace. No, I got it at a homeschool convention. No. It's this cute little contraption that, like, you add to the top of a jar lid. And it controls the gas in and out of it really well. But it it's great because it comes with recipes. And it comes with your exact measurements. <laughs> we have Giggles used something like this, I think. But it was to make... Um, moonshine apple jack oh 
Probably. So Heath used it to make, yeah. It's very controlled. Like if you if you I'm are the liquor girl. <laughs> yes. Yes. Not necessarily. I had that in my notes about ethanol. <laughs> yes. Alcohol as a fermentation, mm-hmm. which you know, that would be like right I uh, sometimes I'm afraid to say things, but my boys and my husband have started yeah. they started a project of making their own beer. Mm-hmm. So that mm-hmm. is a fermented yeah. there is yeast mm-hmm. in there. There are mm-hmm. health benefits. Um, to these things, it was. Yeah. Well, they side. would all testify to the health benefits <laughs> they, they would. of the beer. No, no. Well, Brian's been making it for many years. He, yeah, him and a couple of his friends, they love it. But I mean, this. But it is a science. I am like, all for. Like, yeah. There's a whole bunch of science behind fermenting, and I mean, you can either like this is me. I want to read the science, and then you tell me the exact thing, mm-hmm. or like mm-hmm. you, who's more than happy to just wing it and try it and see what works. So I yeah. I was never that I didn't used to be that way. I was mm. very uptight. And then mm-hmm. marrying my husband, like he one of my favorite things about him is he would cause me to laugh at myself. Like <laughs> you're being ridiculous. <laughs> and so I just learned it which like then trickled over yeah. into I'll just, I'll just try it. Like if I if I mess it up, mm-hmm. what's I don't why am I the way I am? So yeah, I just it's one of the lovely things about him to where now I'm like, oh, wing it. It'll, yeah. it'll be fine. And the kids look at me like, who are you? I'm thinking of when I'm making sourdough bread. I have one particular time. I remember p- measuring out something and I'm taking stuff out by like the pinch me. to That's get it to the exact grab. Right. And my husband comes over like, does it really well, I, need yeah. to be the exact grab? I'm like, I'm not chancing it. It's still me when I make sourdough. I have a spoon where I will like scoop out water if it's the wrong grams or pinch out the flour yeah. if it's wrong. We'll talk yep, to my mother-in-law about that. Because the so. day she decided to not be so uptight about mm-hmm. her sourdough loaf mm-hmm. and not measure, micromanage it, she got beautiful loaves. Yeah. Oh, this was not yeah. my experience. <laughs> but this is I'm her. also she, the one with the labeled spoon for sourdough in our kitchen yeah. that, you know, mm-hmm. I go in and it's stirring green beans or something for dinner and the kids are like, oh, mom, I use a sourdough spoon. <laughs> so... <laughs> Well, when, okay, so when we had the perfect Balance. pickler, the thing that I loved about the recipe, which is interesting, because when you look up fermented food lists, it's it, this stuff isn't on there. So they talked about how you can use fermenting food to make, like, your everyday cooking mm-hmm. easier. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. we did, like, I fermented onions, jars mm-hmm. of diced mm-hmm. onions, um, jars I of love the red onions. garlic. Oh, yes. that's our favorite is the red onions. Mm-hmm. Oh, my goodness. We have fer- to make a make Yeah, so We fermented good. salsa, which sounds weird, except it doesn't. You're basically getting like what, like the canned in the store. It's kind of an odd combination. It's like fresh salsa, but but it doesn't go bad because you fermented mm-hmm. it. It's like when we had Candice here, and she this. was talking about how like your tomatoes turn. Mm-hmm. They yes. get that acidic when mm-hmm. you when you are preserving the stuff and pickling it, it's not the same. It's right. very strange. So we could make like these large batches of salsa. Oh, I would want to sweeten it. it. I would want peaches or something in it because yep. it would be too tangy, I think. But we would only, we pickled it just long <laughs> enough. It doesn't get super <laughs> heavy. Okay. Yeah, you have to try it. You have to try it. You can like also just do the base. Sweet. So like, like sweet tomato. Like my man. <laughs> Yes. Yes. But you could their other way was you could just do the base. So if you do everything that's not your tomatoes. Okay. And pickle it. And then all you're doing is dicing tomatoes and you can pull out what you've Which I've done that. Add. That's called relish. Yes. Yes. <laughs> this is yeah. true. This is true. Yeah. So I liked it just because like ugh, I hate dicing hordes of garlic. Like it was awesome to just go into my fridge. And it is like you know, like you yes, you can go to mm-hmm. Walmart and you can buy like the diced garlic in the jar. Um but like we keep talking about, like you know, it's yours. You've done it, and mm-hmm. the fermentate the mm-hmm. fermentation process adds the benefits. To I it, really so. do think there's something to be said for making it with your own hands and mm-hmm. it, that mind body connection mm-hmm. when you sit down to eat it, to where your yep. body's like, yay, and oh, you yeah. enjoy it more. And I think it benefits you in that way. I yeah. would agree. I mean, there's something special about when we sit down and we eat a meal that is. Finish to end is mm-hmm. something that like we've grown or raised. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, yeah, it feels different. It tastes different. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it, it does. It tastes a lot different. There's also um, a cost benefit to it as well. Like if mm-hmm. when when you're buying actual fermented oh, yes. vegetables, if you can find it in a store, you're mm-hmm. paying top dollar. It is. It's kind of like yep. with the kefir or anything. Yep. Usually, what you're getting. Is not really what you would get if you like sourdough right. bread off the 
the shelf mm-hmm. is not the same Mm-mm. as sourdough bread that you're making. So there's a huge cost benefit by doing that as well on top yeah. of your health benefits. And you're talking about the bacteria or you're making it with your own hands. And I'm thinking I would have to do research on this, but even with sourdough bread, our homes all have unique bacteria to your mm-hmm. family. So it's as if you're, when you're fermenting these things, it's pulling mm-hmm. your bacteria that's unique to your family, which mm-hmm. is going to be different than someone else's. Like, yeah, it is definitely. And they talk about that, like when we were doing a bunch of our research on sourdough. Mm-hmm. So like your sour, no sourdough strains ever going to be the same mm-hmm. because you're pulling it from the air. Right. And then what's very interesting is if you are fermenting in your home, like if you were to start sourdough ferment from scratch, mm-hmm. you're going to get it will take off way faster than someone who's never done it because those bacteria and yeast, mm-hmm. like, they're already in your system. That is wild. Yeah. Like, it literally, is. like, wild yeah. yeast. Wild. <laughs> yeah. It's very crazy. So they that can is. share. I mean, if you're fermenting a lot of foods together right. on the counters, they're going to cross all of that crazy yeast bacteria. So it, yeah. it really is. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. That is awesome. Yeah. So this is all great and lovely. Um, I would like to just talk a little bit about, there are fears with fermenting mm-hmm. that something mm-hmm. could go wrong. What are some signs you're you're making your sauerkraut that it is actually It's not bad. stinky in the right way. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Or you see fur growing, you if know, like mold, the liquid level right. is not, yeah. Mm-hmm. If it's slimy, that's, yeah. slimy. it shouldn't be slimy. One. Yeah. yeah. Um, I I read a while ago, and I'm I'm gonna say I'm ninety percent accurate, but you can look it up. There's a specific name of the um, growth that happens, but like I think if it's white, it's actually not a huge issue. You can pull it off, but if you get pink growth, yes. you're it's trash. Right? You're done. Uh-huh. Is that right? Are you? Yes. No, that is. I am nodding I because I am down. agreeing. Okay. Yes. Yeah. I don't know yeah. if I wrote down pink exactly. Is a no I don't that was. remember pink exactly. Pink or orange? Yeah, yeah. I think is a um, is a no. Something has happened, and whatever that bacteria mm-hmm. is that's growing, you gotta chuck it. You can't just pull it yeah, off. Yeah, your petri dish needs <laughs> right. <laughs> so I yeah. guess I looked this up, and there's some specific smells that mm-hmm. you would know they're bad. Um, if it smells like alcohol, mm-hmm. um, sewage, mm-hmm. sulfur. Or vomit smell, which is just I, I think if you oh the vomit you smells the worst, you wouldn't like yeah. eat it anyway. No. But like these are things like if you mm-hmm. smell it and you're like mm-hmm. this smells like alcohol right. or whatever, don't eat it, toss it. Um, another point I wrote down to make sure I mentioned it um, was with the water. If it's chlorinated water, you're not going to want to use that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You, you don't want to use that mm-hmm. in your sourdough starter. You don't want to use that right. in fermenting your vegetables. But if you have good well water, mm-hmm. great. Mm-hmm. Um, if you live in a city and have chlorinated water, you can distill it. You can leave it out, you know, what, like 24 hours. Mm-hmm. It'll evaporate out of there or boiling it out. But you yep. don't want to just take chlorinated tap water. If you're not going to get the right results. Mm-hmm. Yep. Now, have I, any, sorry, have any of you ladies ever reused the thing that you ferment? Like your leftover ferment? The brine? The brine. Oh, we, for our pickles all the time. Yeah, that's what we do too. Yeah. So tell me how you use it. Tell me how you well, reuse it. Well, if I can catch it before they start drinking it out of the jar, <laughs> um, <laughs> then I add cucumbers or onions or whatever mm-hmm, to yep. it and stick it back in the fridge. Yeah, we were really and su- try and forget surprised. about it for a little bit. Mm-hmm, yeah, mm-hmm. could you do that with eggs? Like, could you pickle eggs like that? Like. With that Hard-boiled brine? eggs? Yeah, um, yeah. You know what I mean? yeah. Have you ever had pickled eggs? Well, they do it, and it's beet juice, you right. know, so, yeah, so. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I do. I do a lot of beets. Mm-hmm. Do so. you add anything to your beets? Like, yes, I, I love pickled beets, but I one time bought beets that were just, like, straight beets with nothing in them. And oh, yeah, no. We actually hated them. Yeah. Like, so I, I wouldn't I like advise those, it. like, in a salad or something, uh-huh. like, but I much prefer the red onions, mm-hmm. the fermented red onions on right. a salad. But, um, no, I do... It's my mother-in-law. It's one of her recipes, mm-hmm. which makes me kind of tear up at whenever I make it. Mm-hmm. Um, but cinnamon and clove, but like that cinnamon stick good. and clove mm-hmm. and sugar. And, and then you're for sugar. fermenting it the same way. Mm-hmm. You're just adding the cinnamon mm-hmm. and clove. Mm-hmm. And then I can it. Mm-hmm. Huh. And I, the kids know when I pull one of those out, my, one of my biggest like Yahoo moments was a few weeks ago we had, um, sabbath saturday with the kids and i Mm. pulled out a thing of beets and my granddaughter loved them (laughs) (laughs) and kept signing more she wanted more and more and more so yeah 
That's awesome. No, I, I have all of beets. my kids eat beets. So. Do you eat pickled beets at your house? Like, I've never our had kids, pickled we beets. We love I mean, regular beets. My husband tries beets. them. He always wants to like them, but then it's something about them. He said tastes like dirt. It mm-hmm. tastes I like the actual soil. Yes. Costco to has a fantastic, huge jar of pickled beets that are really? delicious. Really? Mm-hmm. Yes, they do. Interesting. Good to know. With an S. I don't know. We, just, we buy them when, I, when I'm there and I find them, but they are just... Well, we just bought those fresh pickles from Costco Mm -hmm. for Mm -hmm. the um, Beatrix Potter. We Mm -hmm. had a book club thing for our homeschool group, and everybody kept asking. Mm -hmm. They wanted pictures of whatever Mm -hmm. that. Well, I think until you've had like fresh pickles, you don't realize Mm -hmm. the difference. Mm -hmm. I mean, that was us for a long time. Like we would have the jarred ones, but then once you have fresh, actually fermented pickles, it's. They had dill. It had actual dill in Mm -hmm. it, which you Mm -hmm. know I'm the only one who I've ever known like had put up pickles with the dill in it and then mm-hmm. they had i think it was a grape leaf in there hmm. too so mm-hmm. yeah it okay. looked like a greek name on the on the really? label but yeah i don't remember the name i, don't know. Pickles I think i saw are, it near the feta cheese yeah. When I was there. yeah the claws and pickles are my husband's favorite yeah but they were very similar i would have said that they're kind of in that same yep. which it's interesting when you turn that pickle jar over to see how many of your beloved pickle companies add green dye to their you know pickles why do you gotta go do that i yeah you know but but if you look at the fresh pickles that are usually in the refrigerated section now we've found some that also still add the green green dye but it's clear like your brine is really pretty clear it is i mean the longer they set the mm -hmm. yeah yeah but but yeah we we would reuse our Mm -hmm. brine and like you said cut up a cucumber and throw it in there and then just hope someone could leave it alone long enough which usually doesn't happen Mm -mm. they're hands are in it well then they're Mm -hmm. really crunchy so Mm -hmm. yeah and Mm -hmm. they might not be as dill pickly tasting but crunchy yeah yeah no so that's an easy this was one of our i mean the the sky's the limit with fermenting i can't really think of many things that and it is one of those things just try it guys Mm -hmm. like go online find Mm -hmm. a recipe ask Mm -hmm. somebody like just try it and yeah it's a small way to add to your pantry with like big rewards Mm -hmm. Yeah. It is, yes. And it's a great way to keep your sugar. What cut would you out recommend if someone was going to try it, the vegetable they should start with? Pickles. Pickles. Cucumbers. Yeah. I would say, yeah. cucumbers. I would say cucumbers or, or cabbage. Mm-hmm. They, yeah. Those two were pretty good. We did easy. carrots. I fermented yeah. carrots. Okay. They were you good. were at my house and you yeah. tried them, and we both were like, man, maybe a little longer. longer. Right. We went one week longer, trashed them all. Like they went from like, yeah, you, when you and I yeah, had them to be like daily, it just is a baby about, and baby then like, it. we mm-hmm. went a week too long, and oh, they were disgusting. But the carrots really? actually were because you get the taste of the pickle, mm-hmm. but no matter how, like that long ferment, you still got a really good crunch. So right, right. we were trying yeah. it, but I need to try again. You guys would like dilly beans. I need to get pull those out the next time yeah. you guys are there. Yeah, and your apples. So I did um, actually. It's still in the back of my pantry. Probably I should pull it out. We, uh, I fermented the peels this mm-hmm. year off of some apples to oh, do nice. apple cider vinegar. So mm-hmm. that, that was super easy mm-hmm, also. Mm-hmm. That's nothing special about that one. But yeah, it is kind of the set it and forget it mm-hmm. for a little bit. Mm-hmm. But then when you're nearing the time frame, you got to be yeah. on it. It's like having berry bushes and birds. You have oh, to be gosh. ready. It's or a pear tree. <laughs> yeah. If you, it's like they're not ready to come off, and you're thinking, "I'm going to get those pears off," and then they're overnight. They came off yeah, and they're gone. They're yeah. gone. Yeah. Um, yeah. The squirrels ate them. <laughs> I know. Yeah, I know. I need to get it. I really, really, really need to get back. I love the garlic. That was my favorite, and the salsa starter was. Mm. I want to try that. And then mm-hmm. the water kefir, I may be mm-hmm. convinced. You I know, your water kefir yeah. always sounds really it. good. I went to Nebraska, and this was when Nevaeh was not married yet, but just like courting Jonathan. And Jonathan's sister had a get-together, like a ladies' thing, and they had bottles of mm. that she had made and blueberries, all sorts of things. But someone, I don't know, maybe I popped it all. It literally was a champagne. It, it was so carbonated it blew my hair back okay wow. so, they all got to chuckle about now, that i wonder so, how long you could really keep it sealed though if it's still fermenting wouldn't it explode at some point mm-mm. no if you have the right bottle it won't and you no, it wouldn't or you put it in a cooler area if you keep it in your basement yeah, then you'll maybe. be fine you wouldn't want to keep it heated forever. heated yeah unlike i guess my husband's beer they it's actually he actually wants it in a warm place 
even yeah, after to the ferment. fact. Hmm. But maybe because mm, he, it's a stout and he wants it as stout as humanly possible. <laughs> he wants to pour it and it has it a shape of its own. Its own. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yes. Well, when we talk about things that we're reclaiming, I mean, fermentation is like what the oldest. I mean, it's one of the oldest mm-hmm. things that you could possibly talk about. And you're just pulling it out of the air. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 I mean, it was their main means of food preservation for a really long time is... Isn't it just like the Lord, though, to like especially bless the things that are right there within your home or Mm -hmm. very close? Like we talked about honey before. Heath just took off Mm -hmm. two and a half gallons of honey, and we've caught two or three swarms. Mm -hmm. Um, But you want to have your local honey. You want to have like Mm -hmm. it just Mm -hmm. tastes better. And Mm -hmm. I'm like, oh. This came from our our bees, our garden, our you know all the things. So mm-hmm. I yeah again I had to hide it, and uh, oh, we I'm had sure, so yeah. much that I yeah found a special spot. <laughs> We're always we go through our honey so fast. It's shocking to me. We've been doing the teaspoon every morning mm. to help with allergy symptoms, and it seems to be helping. Nice. And I've been using molasses in the morning too for what. Uh, low iron. I kind of forgot about this, and we all suffer. All the ladies in our house suffer from low iron. Mm-hmm. So, um, saw something and started reading up on it. But the unsulfured uh, molasses with a little bit of cinnamon and lemon and hot water in the morning. It's become my new. Mm. Yeah. I wonder if the molasses water kefir would serve two purposes. I don't know. I don't know. So many questions. Mm-hmm. Well, you'd have to find out what the ingredient in molasses is that's beneficial to your iron and see if it's mm-hmm. depleted during that mm-hmm. fermenting mm-hmm. process. But I think yeah. it's the ferritin. So it's Me like too. your backup yeah. iron supplies, mm-hmm. which is what I, mm-hmm. yeah. Wow. I'm getting ready to have blood work, so I'm figuring out all the things. <laughs> trying to Working. up my chances on like cramming for the test. <laughs> <laughs> Christy's like downing multivitamins. Like. <laughs> yeah, that's how it works. It's I know, so right? Good. <laughs> like, I'm sorry, all your levels are off the charts. I don't know what's going on. What is going on? She's with gonna you. be like, your numbers look great, but like your stores are empty, so I'm very confused. <laughs> yeah. Nice, Christy. Thanks. <laughs> Can you cheat for a blood test? No, oh, I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> they might think I have more issues than what I have if I'm doing that. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Supplement. Mental evaluation. <laughs> mm-hmm. Oh, well, no one would ever. <laughs> they hear how many kids we have and they're like, are you, you're not sane, are you? Oh, no. not really. I used to be. <laughs> I gave it all, gave all the brain cells to the kids. So there's that. And is it. there a lovely padded room you'd put me in mm-hmm. for a couple of weeks? Is Maybe it quiet? I, it. Yeah. I know. Is it quiet? Can I book a room? Mm-hmm. Right. Oh no, gosh. I'm joking. <laughs> Some days I'm Am not. I? <laughs> <laughs> right. Awesome. Well, I'm excited. I need to, I want to get back to doing my prepping ferment. Mm-hmm. So that's on my list of, my short list of things to do. Yeah. Especially with stuff coming out of the garden. Mm-hmm. But yeah, so. exciting. It is exciting. Yeah. Well, thank you for joining us today, you guys. As always, you can find us on Facebook and Instagram and all of your popular places to listen to podcasts. Mm-hmm. We're there as well. And we look forward to seeing you guys next week. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you.